Hi, my name's Dave, and I want to tell you what it's like to interview as a data scientist. I'm mostly self-taught. I started programming BASIC when I was just a wee lad back in the 80s on a Texas Instruments computer that you know, hooked up to the television with a coaxial interface. Uh, but mainly my background before I was interested in machine learning was um, in database administration, full stack web development, performance, optimization, and, and scalable infrastructure management, um, sprinkled with just a little bit of management here and there. But I'm mostly I'm self-taught, but I did go to school for music performance, but ultimately I left the program uh, just short of completion to start a business. Um, and so far, I've been working for 15 years or so. Well, not to give you my life story, but I've been a developer for quite a while, and I think it's important to understand where I'm coming from. Initially, I got interested in machine learning at my last job, working with the research department, uh, where I wrote a few prototypes dealing with multinomial base, text mining, and started dabbling a little bit with matrix factorization techniques. But for the past three years, I've dove in, had first, and completed Andrew Ng's machine learning courseware from Stanford Extension via Coursera. I uh, supplemented with Calc stats here and there from a variety of places uh, like Khan Academy, textbooks my friends gave me. Um, and then I took a, a, like a survey class on data science at General Assembly. Uh, and that was really good. Um, but, you know, uh, since since then, I've mainly accepted every project I can reasonably complete and just trying to get experience. Um, but, you know, believe it or not, even me as a self-taught college dropout without a master's or PhD has been interviewing for data science roles. Uh, the most obvious impression I get from the dozen or so interviews I've been on is that, um, you know, uh, that this... Uh, data science role is largely misunderstood. And if the surplus of content being written about how this new role in business is yet to really define itself isn't an indicator of uh, this vague expectation around what data science is or it isn't, the hiring process certainly reflects that, in my opinion. I've mostly been interviewing for opportunities I've found on Craigslist or other job boards. Uh, and the companies range from startups to medium-sized companies of 1 to 200 people. And in San Francisco, literally job racks that are titled Data Scientist. I've found, and a lot of colleagues of mine have found, that the hiring process for data science jobs isn't so much different than what you would expect as a software engineer. With the addition of a little theory and practical knowledge around data problems, most cases, You'll expect some qualifying activity or programming tasks to be completed before a phone screen. Um, or maybe not. Maybe it comes like the second or third um, chat you have with someone. But usually, um, I found this to be true. They'll ask you to do something like produce a histogram of some kind, do a fizz buzz exercise, anagram solver, or some really basic data structure question. Um, some phone screens I've had, um, I've been asked to describe basic objects and academic computer science concepts fresh out of textbooks, such as hash tables, linked lists, arrays, and describe you know some of these things in uh, in terms of you know big O notation. Some cases I didn't provide enough detail about what they were expecting and never got a call back, but usually if I got a phone screen, I got an interview. Most interviews uh, that I've been in have started out with explaining a project that I've done and then deconstructing it from end to end. What the problem was, what the metrics for success are, assumptions, how I got the data, any pre-processing, the modeling, the classification uh, that was used, the validation test, training split, or how do you, how do you validate the assumptions. Uh, everything and especially how the model works in as much deal as possible. So 
uh, and being able to talk to the pre-processing, like if you're dealing with text, being able to explain like TFIDF, how do, the, how do you convert, uh, you know, text to tokens, and at what level does a cross product occur, where does the likelihood function come, uh, and how does it work in terms of uh, naive bays. Um, and then, you know, other concepts like gradient descent, uh, hyperparameter selection, error terms, performance metrics, be it naive base, linear regression, random forest, ensemble methods, support vector machines, any kind of deep learning. Um, so, yeah, and, and then to be able to understand or at least explain how you can use these things differently and, and how they're different in terms of performance and how do you measure them and, and uh, how do you deal with them uh, as far as yeah, maybe from a discovery point of view and then from an at scale and in production point of view. Even though some of that touches a little bit on, on data engineering, but I still think it's useful and it, and it seems like a lot of companies are asking about that and, and they're putting it in a lot of job requirements. So uh, even if you don't aspire to be a big data engineer, I think it's important to understand what the tools are and where these things cross over and you know how your role fits in with that whole equation because whether you like it or not the work you're doing or will be doing should be put in a production system at some point this might be a shocker but in the vast majority of interviews i've been in with small to medium-sized companies here in the bay area it's been heavy on software engineering questions and especially on data structure puzzles. If you've, um, you know, if you're self-taught like me, you you would be wise to familiarize yourself with these traditional academic computer science concepts that you probably just don't deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, or you just, you know, if you've learned by doing projects your whole life because, uh, I mean, that's that's how you've learned. <laughs> you should expect to be measured by the standards of academic um yeah yeah you know trained academically trained people and but for me at least having tons of experience in a variety of projects doesn't automatically imbue me with this level of knowledge to solve these data structures questions um, and puzzles but you know thankfully we live in an age where there's plenty of resources available you got hacker rank there's codility code chef um there's tons of good things. I'll put some links in the bottom of the, in the description here, but uh, it, it's it's really not that bad. You know, you might look at it at first and and kind of scoff and be like, "Oh, this is ridiculous." I the pre prefix sum or a binary tree uh, or binary search. These things are not that bad. If you've been programming for a while, you should be able to talk to these but if you back if your background is in computer science and you have a computer science degree well you know you, you don't need to hear any of this so the last interview i was in recently was mostly centered around taking ownership of like a b testing practices supporting the growth of a website um and, and trying to increase their viewership, you know, getting people to click on ads, basically. Uh, but, you know, obviously more than that, but mostly user behavior metrics through designing and conducting experiments um, with, with a high degree of competency, competency expected with natural language processing desired. Um, I found the job on a local board and was sent a code example or a code exercise the same day after I applied. And, uh, so I created an IPython notebook, uh, made a histogram of the words because that, that's what they asked for. Uh, used in you know words used in a sentence, and then I posted it on GitHub. I sent them a link. As a side note, when asked to produce a software problem via email, if it's just a PDF and they just say, "Hey, email this back," um, I I think yeah, as a Python guy into other people that work with Python, um, I think it, it, you know, it's in your advantage to use a Python notebook and post it to GitHub since they now support the rendering of the notebook format in line and it captures the output of your local interpreter. So it's easy to read. It's easy. Uh, it's easy for people that you send this to, to share. If you can think that 
you know, I send you, uh, or, or maybe you send me a link and, uh, and, you know, I want to show other people on my team that are involved in the hiring process. It's really easy for them to just open it up and, it, you know, it looks, you know, pretty good, you know, so you can kind of capture a lot of performance metrics around, you know, what different approaches you may have taken and the uh, run times and, you know, any kind of vector output for, um, you know, graphs that you might, we might produce. Um, but no, anyway. So, you know, after sending in my word histogram, I got an invitation to a phone screen four weeks later. And, uh, sometimes it does take that long. So you never know when you're sending in your application, when you might hear from someone, but, um, don't fret. You know, usually if someone is interested, I find that they will reach out within a week usually within a week, maybe two at the most, but uh, it's not uncommon to hear back much later. And, and we all have to work, uh, and interviewing is a time sink for companies, so just as much as it is for those looking for work. Now, only half the time I was expected to talk about how to approach a data problem. Um, still pretty important, I think. Uh, I guess it really depends on the the position and the job, the company. Um, but an example being, you know, we have data collected about when a user comments on a blog post and how often a user signs up for a mailing list and maybe a few other things related to, you know, obser observations about user behavior on a website. Uh, and we want to figure out how to increase the number of, of signups or the viewership or, you know, pick take your pick, you know, how do we, how do we get more users or how do we get more users to click on, on ads or something? Um, so for a real problem, like real world problems like this, uh, you, you might not have much experience with split or AB testing or really get a sense about, you know, what the expectations are, uh, from management. Um, but under such a vague premise about data, you're really being asked to produce a general plan that describes how you might start a project or approach a product uh, product problem or uh, you know something you know related to hopefully something real world that the company has faced um, you know but really it comes down to identifying the stakeholders asking questions about what what's expected uh, question the level of granularity about you know, what is, what is being asked for and uh, how you might communicate what's possible or not. So, you know, some questions that, uh, I might ask given, you know, such a, such a broad set of questions about, you know, user behavior or just how to approach a data problem. I might ask things like, you know, in an interview, what is the typical lifespan of a user? You know, how much data do we have about, you know, how much data, or how much do we know about these users and how granular is the data? Do we have time series? Is it events that are time stamped? Um, you know, and then I would ask about, you know, or, or I would explain and speak about how I would sample the data, um, plotting histogram, maybe potential features like time of day, like number of unique posts, replies, time on the site, um, and then how I might design experiments with split testing. Uh, this could go really deep, but obviously you want to approach it with in in the level of uh, with the level of detail and within the correct sequence. So, you know, you, you probably won't be designing a split test before you actually do some histograms, and uh, you you won't be uh, collecting all this data until you really understand what is being asked for. So, you know, I think being able to talk about those things and what makes sense, uh, you know, how you, how you validate those assumptions each step of the way. Um, you know, all this is hypothetical, but I hope you get the point. So you should expect to talk about a very vague data problem, how you might approach it. Uh, and, you know, hopefully, you know, ace it. And when it comes to stats in general, uh, sadly, I have only been asked about a P-score a few times and uh, a few things related to probabilities. And then maybe I've described some some business around, you know, how the central limit theorem works once. Um, 
I actually think that statistics, basic statistics, is pretty important, but it doesn't seem to have been very important during the interview process, I found. In summary, expect to be screened with a programming problem. Be able to talk about a project or two in as much granular detail as possible. You know, just pick any anything you've done that that you'd want to talk about in an interview. Something in, that you're uh, that, that you're impressed by and that you would want to you know, share with with someone as if they were going to give you a job. Uh, and you don't have to be a super hacker, but at least you know two thirds of interviews I've been in have asked really tough software engineering questions. Even for me, tough. Uh, whether you're self-taught or not, review how data structures work and how to implement them. Go online, find a, find some sites, um, check my links here, and, and you know, for what it's worth, I'd say up to an intermediate level, which I know is a very subjective kind of rating for for something like that. But uh, actually, all these sites rate their problems that you can solve. Uh, that they provide with some level of difficulty. So I'd say the ones that are labeled intermediate are pretty, I think, significant uh, enough to say, uh, you know, they're they're representative for good good data structure questions you'd find in an interview. Um, and think about ways you would approach a very vague data problem because you'll get asked, you know, how do you define the goals? How do you validate your work? How might you communicate your findings? Um, you know, prepare for being able to talk about it in, in really granular terms, but, you know, don't be surprised when your interviewer only wants to go and talk in, like, in vague terms. So, you know, prepare for that. And if you can prepare yourself for these types of questions, you will be in good shape. My name is Dave Yarrington, and thanks for watching.